morning guys beautiful day out sun shining it's cooler today almost almost that fall crisp cool air it's still gonna be in the mid 70s today at least i think so anyway um we had some rain this weekend you remember friday when i was really hoping it would rain and it didn't and we missed all that well that night in the middle of the night we caught a shower had 1.2 inches here which was fantastic so we've got plenty of moisture, well, we've got moisture, and uh, we're not irrigating. That's done for now. Uh, hopefully, it's done for good, but we'll see. We, we might need to catch another rain before that's make that call. Um, and we've got enough moisture now in the uh, ground that we've been working up, getting ready for our oats and radish cover crop to plant our oats and radish cover crops. So we're gonna spend the day getting ready to do that. The, the plan is to use a spreader, like a fertilizer spreader, pull type, uh, to spread this stuff rather than our drills because it'll be faster. Uh, I'm not worried about accuracy all that much, just as long as I can get the right, right rate on. And then we're gonna uh, run our field cultivator across it real shallow to try and work it in. Um, so there's a few things we've gotta do to get ready to do that. One, we've gotta get uh, our fertilizer spreader hooked up and try and figure out where to set it and in order to set it I'll show you how these work when we get one uh, but you need to know the bulk density of whatever you're spreading in this case oats and radishes and I have no idea so we've got our little manual test weight bulk density scale tester thing here we're gonna come down and get a sample out of the box see if we can't figure that out so we have an idea of where to set the scale or the, the, the gate on the spreader. And uh, then we're gonna go get a spreader here eventually. Uh, we've gotta get the tractor ready. I'm gonna put GPS on it because it would be a nightmare trying to uh, spread all this with no auto steer. So, that's the plan for today. Let's go see. All right, so here is our uh, oats and radish blend. And I know it looks a lot like just oats, but if you look real close, you can see all those little red seeds there. Those are the radish seed and we've got this uh, test weight scale here so basically what we do is fill up the cup and then this is gonna be difficult but we got to strike it off so that it's level yeah that's pretty good and then we'll screw that on the end here which I can't do with one hand and then we'll take a reading so now we've got uh, the seed in there, and you hold it by this ring, and then we've got to move this uh, slide weight down the handle until it balances. So that is pretty close. I might have to adjust it just a little bit, but then we read on our scale there where that little arrow is, and we want uh, pounds per cubic foot, which is the top number. We're about 37 it would appear. Might be close enough. So that gives us at least a starting point on where to set our, uh, our, sh our spreader at. Uh, the nice thing is that each one of these totes is uh, 2,000 pounds. So we can dump one in and go spread it and figure out how many acres we've covered. And it will tell us whether we're getting the right rate on or not. I just need to know where to start to be close. All right, so if we're going to get our spreader to spread this stuff, we're going to use this tractor because I can put auto steer in it, um, which means we need to unhook our mower. So I'm going to take it back and try and clean off some of this chaff and stuff that's on it, uh, and then we'll get that unhooked and get it ready. Okay, that's better. We'll fold her up, pull it up here and park it. Okay, got that unhooked. So, we've got a little bit of work to do to our tractor before we hook up to a cart, before I go get a cart. Uh, we gotta get this thing working, which it's it's not at the moment because, uh, well, I'll show you in a second. Yeah, you see this wire harness? That's not that's not the end that goes on there. It's not, not supposed to be like that. This one got pulled apart. This is the one that goes out the back of the cab there, up onto the roof for the GPS receiver. And when the GPS receiver got taken off of this tractor, the cable was not secured and it fell down and got wrapped around an axle and it pulled it apart. So somewhere in here there's another half 
that uh, we've got a yeah right there we gotta try and splice that together and I don't know that it'll work real good but we're gonna try it because well it's worth a shot so we're gonna do that and get that back in then we got to put a new Jeep or different GPS receiver up on top of the cab and get this plugged in so that it powers up and uh, then we'll be ready for a cart all right well, I got the wires cleaned up or trimmed and stripped. This seems like a perfect application for my uh, shrinking solder heat up connections. They work pretty good. So I'm going to get these all connected and then I did get a big piece of shrink tube to put over it and cover the whole thing up. There. You can't even tell. Can't even tell. Okay. So there's a little bulge right there, but. That should work. Uh, we'll put it back in the tractor and plug everything in and we'll find out, but uh, hopefully that'll work. Well, my splices didn't work. I put them in and apparently the resistance through these uh, wires is important. Not gonna work, gotta get a new cable. All right, well, I called my uh, John Deere guy about uh, that cable and he thought he had one actually, an uh, updated version. This one's pretty old, it was, I bought it. 10, 12 years ago for using the gator on the GPS, or the, the GPS on the on the four-wheeler, sorry, um, a long time ago for spreading clover seeds. So it actually has old style connectors for an old brown box display that has been obsolete for years. And so if we can get a newer one that's updated, that'd be better anyway. Um, he was gonna check, make sure that what he had was the right one. And I don't know if he wants to sell me the one that he's got. So he might just let me borrow it for a couple of days to do what I'm gonna do, but I'll probably buy one anyway. Cause we don't use that cable a lot, but we use it enough that it's worth having one around. So uh, anyway, I'm going to get my fertilizer spreader. In this case, oats and clover, cover crop spreader. All right, well, here's our spreader. I'll get it unhooked from my pickup so we can hook up to the tractor. Okay, so, um, I did find a cable that is going to work for our auto steer. Uh, however, this tractor and our older ones, uh, they don't have a hydraulic valve to tie into the steering for the um, auto steer to work. They use what's called an ATU or an auto track universal. And in order to use that, you have to pull the steering wheel off. It, it actually replaces the steering wheel and mounts on it. I'll show it to you in a minute. Um, so I took the steering wheel off of this tractor, but the ATU is currently in our 8300, which is over in the field where dad has been working. So we're gonna take the steering wheel that goes in the 8300 normally and go over there and pull off our ATU because he is not using it. It's just, that's the tractor that we use it in the most. And so it usually just stays in there. Okay, so this is our ATU. And this is, happens to be an ATU 200. There's now a 300 out. We've had this for quite a while. Um, but basically we gotta pop this cap off and uh, take it off and put the steering wheel back on. So there's a nut that goes on a bolt there that holds the cap on. And then there's another nut in there that holds it on the splines, which was clearly super tight. <sighs> yeah. And just like that, that comes off. I also unhooked the wire harness. So now we take our uh, original steering wheel and pop that on there, put the nut, everything back together, and we're done. Okay, good to go. Dad, uh, Dad was actually pretty happy when I told him I was gonna do that because while this thing is really nice for using auto steer and tractors that don't have auto steer built into them, um, that little motor on there, in here is rather bulky and heavy and obtrusive and it sits right between your knees and it's hard to swivel and so it is a lot nicer to just have the regular steering wheel when you're not using it all right well i went up and got my cable as well while i was out so we got to get this installed and then the etu's got to go on there just still in my truck so we'll get to it so it's working on them drills power washing at the moment Okay, I've almost got the steering wheel. Okay, I've got that on there. The center cap is a little loose, but that don't matter. It's just for decoration. Um, these pieces here, that's kind of a anti-rotation bracket, which means that when the motor spins, it turns the steering wheel and not the motor base go flying around this in a circle. Um, so then we've got uh, 
connections made there. This is a remote uh, auto track resume switch. I should get some Velcro or something and mount that up there. Or better yet, would be to take this apart and hardwire the switch right into one of these spots for it. But we're not doing enough to worry about. I did that in the 8300. That's the tractor that uses this the most, but I'm not going to in here. Um, you can also engage it by touching this strip on there. And then we've also got our cable going up. So we should be good here. Let's turn around and see if it recognizes everything and it all works. All right, well, it looks good. That means that it recognizes our ATU. And that's our Starfire, so everything's there and good. We need to calibrate because we're way off on our pitch and roll. We can do that. Cool. All right, so one more thing other than calibrating that that we need to do before we hook up to our spreader, and that is switch our PTO shaft because that is a 540 RPM PTO, and we've got the 1,000 in from the mower, so i to swap that real quick. It doesn't take much. I've shown this before, but basically you pull the snap ring out. It's right there. Pull this out, flip it around, put it back in, put the snap ring back in. All right, that is hooked up. Um, so the way that this works is it drives off the ground tire to ch turn this uh, chain that's in the bottom in there. And that chain basically then adjusts by your speed because it's ground driven and it dumps off the fertilizer or in our case, cover crop seed, off the end of this belt, which then fall down onto these spinners. These spinners spin, throw it out to get your spread pattern. Um, our issue is getting the gate closed enough to get the right rate on because we're pretty uh, low rates. So there's a chart here, you gotta figure out your bulk density, which the lowest this chart goes down to is 45, ours is like 37. So we're way over here and trying to figure out what it would be, but, at 45 and then only an inch and a half gate opening, you're gonna put on 58 pounds per acre. Um, we can get our gate opening a little under an inch and a half, like an inch and a quarter, but we only want 40 pounds. So between the bulk density and the gate opening, I'm hoping that as closed as tight as it's gonna be is gonna be awfully close. Um, but we're gonna put a box in there and see how far it goes. And if I get the right number of acres, then we're good. If I don't, then we'll have to adjust. There goes Dad, he's doing the spraying for us. We got them two wheat fields that uh, we haven't sprayed the Roundup on to kill off the volunteer wheat and the weeds uh, before we rip it. So he's doing that now, which means we'll be back in the tillage stuff later this week. Um, but we gotta, get, we gotta get this done first. So I think we're ready to take it down to my seed warehouse and dump a box in. All right, let's dump some cover crop in. Once I get this rate calculated, I probably could put three or four boxes in here. But uh, we're only going to put one in now because I want to make sure that I've got it calibrated right and that uh, we're not way over applying. Okay. Ugh. see it kind of spills out in our belt there but not off the end by any means so yeah should work so the other big component to getting our rate right is our spread pattern the width um, that chart that I showed you was for a 40 foot spread pattern which is what we're shooting for um, but I don't know how good it's going to be so what we're gonna do just test it a little bit. Now, if you were actually calibrating a spreader, you would take some catch pans and spread them out in the field and see how much is in each one of them and weigh it up and all that good stuff. I don't have any catch pans, but I have big sheets of cardboard. So we're gonna take these out there. And I said something to dad about doing it. He's like, well, the seed might all slide off of it. I'll just spray them with some glue. So we're gonna do that. All right, we have made it out here to our field, one that we discrepped and field cultivated down. And somebody asked in one of my other videos about working on an angle to help level stuff. We actually did do that. It may not appear like it in the video. I think I showed it some, but this is worked on a little bit of an angle. We're usually pretty shallow, maybe only five degrees or something, but it is on an angle. So uh, it has mellowed out quite a bit with the rain or broken up some of the clods and 
settled some. Um, still a little moisture on top. Plenty of moisture for planting our cover crop and working it in. This is going to work good. And uh, then we'll hit it with a field cultivator scratching in and it should break up some more of them bigger clods and stuff like that and be good conditions. So my plan here, big sheets of cardboard. We're going to set these down. Oh, I forgot my tape measure. It's in the tractor. I was going to space one like right in the middle of the tractor and then one at 20 feet and one maybe at 50 feet or something. We're supposed to have a 40 foot spread pattern so that'd be 20 feet each way of the cart. Um, I'll probably go that way. We'll make a round and we'll see how much seed is laying on them. So I need to anchor these. Let me get some rocks. Okay, so I got my cardboard laid out here. Now if the seed hits it, it'll slide right off. So we're gonna fix that by doing this. Oh, we may need some better glue. Ah, that'll work. So it should stick to that. And then we'll be able to count seeds and compare Probably aren't gonna count. We'll just compare the one that's kind of in the middle of the spread versus the edges and see if it looks to be reasonable or not. This is a cover crop. It is not my main crop. I'm not going to harvest it. I do not care if it is perfect. All right, well, let's go. One more thing before we start. We have to engage the spreader. We we'll pull up this wire and we pull this handle out and put it like that. And what that does is push that chain down onto this sprocket that's welded to the axle. The tire, yeah. So it will turn it, which will then turn the belt. We're gonna put our wire back in. I'm guessing this wire is not original, factory, but it works. So we engage our PTO, speed up to 540, which is for the spinners in the back that we cannot see at all. Engage our auto steer, which is engaged already. You can see it turns the actual steering wheel. And now you can see our belt driving. Oh, oh, slow down. Spinners on, slow down. So that belt then controls the speed and how much. That's your rate adjustment for speed. And we'll drive over our cardboard here, which I'm not centered on, but that's because our tillage passes are on an angle and I can't tell. How fast do we want to be driving? Let's try six miles an hour. We'll see what sticks to them. Close enough there. Okay, I'm going to stop just because I want to make sure that we're actually putting something out. You can see our spinners are spinning there. Let's see what's on our cardboard. Oh yeah, not a lot, it's not real thick. How about this side, this one? Yeah, same thing about. Okay, cool, so that's about what we expected. There shouldn't be much on this one because of where I drove, just a little bit. A couple pieces, but that one will get most of it from the next pass because these are about evenly spaced and I was driving between those two so I didn't think it would throw it that far, which means our 40 foot is pretty good. And our as long as our rate is okay, we're in pretty good shape here. You can see a few things flying off the back. I don't know, maybe you can't, but I can. Falling off the belt on those spinners. Sweet, this is gonna work. So the other good thing here is that it will keep track of my uh, coverage with the GPS and it'll tell me how many acres we've done, which will tell me how much seed we should have used and makes it a lot easier to figure out whether our rain is correct or not. All right. It's going to be sort of hard to tell when we run empty because I can't see in there. And it's a little rough. we we'll bounce in here, but that's okay. That's, that was the point. It'll work. Okay, I made a full another round from where we stopped the last time past my cardboard I wanted to stop and check them again well I don't know if there's any more on this than there was before but there's seed on it so it looks fairly light to me I, I don't know I don't know if that's 40 pounds to the acre or not it's pretty hard to tell it's pretty thin but it's there um, 
Point being, the spread pattern is fine. Whether we need to up the rate some or not, we'll see, but we're gonna have to run this one out to know where we're at, or at least get quite a bit of it. So, but if I look on the ground here, you know, right here, we can see these oats laying on the ground. So it's, they're, they're here, there's a radish. Yeah, there's another radish, there's oats all over. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I just don't know about the rate, and that's why we're put one box in, and we'll see how many acres we get, and if we're uh, close on the, the acres, then we're getting what we're supposed to. We got quite a bit in there yet, but we haven't done very much, so. Ah, so far so good. All right, so we've covered a little over 35 acres. We're gonna get out and see how much we got in there so we can't see from the cab. It shouldn't be empty. Let's see. Well, it's not empty, but it's close. Crap. Okay, so we're getting it on a little heavy is what that means. Which means we've either got to figure out how to close our gate up more, or, uh, yeah, blend something in with it. We could blend some fertilizer in it, which would up our rate, but I was trying to avoid that because we already put the chicken litter on here. We don't need the fertilizer out here. Um, but I'll have to calculate out how heavy we got it and how much less we need to put on and see what I want to do. Okay, so I spread the rest of that out. We ended up getting about 38 acres. Uh, not quite, but uh, that works out to uh, 50, 52 pounds to the acre. We're shooting for 40, so we're high. So we gotta figure out how to adjust it down a little bit. Two options, we close the gate or we get a wider spread pattern. The wider spread pattern's gonna be pretty hard to do. Because I think we're we're good where we're at, but I don't know if we're gonna get any wider. So yeah, we'll look at it back at the farm. Okay, so this is my solution and what we're gonna try. Um, because I couldn't close that gate any farther. So I clamped a piece of angle iron on the bottom here. I don't know how well you guys can see it there, but it's there, which allows me to close it down a little bit farther. I've got that nice C-clamp that worked really well there, but I can only find one. So over here, I've got a little vice grip that I've got clamped down as tight as I can get it. There's clearance to the belt, but not much. So we're gonna try that, see if it uh, holds. We'll have to get out and check it every couple of rounds, at least until we're confident in it. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I've got them clamped on there just as tight as I can get them. So hopefully they will hold. And uh, and then I closed the gap. So we were at about an inch and a quarter was what I was able to close the gate down to without that. And I've got it down to an inch now. So um, that should be about where we need it, I would assume. If not, we can figure something else out or adjust some more or give up and blend it with some fertilizer so we can actually put a bigger rate on, higher rate, and just put a little extra fertilizer out there, whatever. It looks a little bit crooked. It looks narrower over here than over here. And that's not because of the clamp that I've got on there. That's just because, I don't know, it's crooked. I don't know why, but there's nothing I can do about it. So, we'll get another box. I guess Dad blew a hydraulic hose on the sprayer, so him and Phil were working on getting that off and getting a new one. Uh, not the same one that we've had trouble with before. Something with a line to the pump or something along those lines. So, uh, yeah. One more thing to deal with today. Okay. Got another box of seed in there. We'll engage our ground drive. Check my clamps. Tight. Really tight. That doesn't wiggle at all. I think they'll be okay. We'll do around and check them. See what they look like. Um, we should get to, what should we get to? We got 38 acres. So we should get to about 88 acres uh, before this runs out. Somewhere between 85 and 90 would be good. All right, I made a round. Let's see if our uh, angle iron is still there. Please still be there. Ha, huh, sweet. It's still there. Check 
our clamps. That one's still tight. This one, still tight. Excellent, that's gonna work. We'll try two rounds and then we'll get out and check it this time. Yeah, that's gotta be less. It's not up to the, where the clamps are on the belt. Meh, all I can do is try. Spread. Can't see it in there, but if you look real close, it's not too shaky. You can see it falling into the chain right inside that door. So that's how I know there's at least still stuff in there for now. We're uh, got about 10 acres done off of this batch. I'm gonna stop at this end again, double check, make sure that our uh, gate addition is still there. See if we can find anything that we're spreading. It's pretty light rate. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's some. Yeah, they're out here. Don't see any radishes, but those are harder to find. Right there, maybe. Yeah, they're here. There's a radish. Pretty consistent spread, it looks like. There's a radish. So they're not, uh, it's not real thick what they are there there's a bunch of oats by the time we work this the field cultivator and stir it all in it'll mix it all pretty good but all right let's go see what stuff looks like over here still there still tight I think that's gonna work I'm not too worried about it anymore because it's not any different than when I started what do you think have we used one fifth I have no idea We've done about 10 acres, touch more, should do 50, should have used a fifth of a box, got no idea. Okay, so we're almost up to 63 acres, which would be uh, halfway on this load to what we need to get to uh, 50 acres off of this tank, uh, bag, box. So I was just going to get out and check, see what our box looks like, how much is in there, and uh, make sure our clamps haven't come loose again so well there's still seed is that half a box worth just starting to see the front of the chain there meh looks close I have no idea clamps look good everything's still working like it's supposed to so we'll keep going till we run out or till we get to our 88 acres and see how much we got left and then if we have to adjust we will okay we've got uh about 76 acres done, which means we've done as much on this tank or this box as we did on the first one before we ran out of seed. So I just thought I would check and see how much more we've got left at this point now. Because it was empty when we had done 38 acres the first time. Not empty. Actually, this looks like it's going to be about right. We may be still just a touch high. But there's more there than it looks like. I bet we can do another 10 acres. That'd be 400 pounds. Yeah, I bet there's 400 pounds there. All right, that's good. That makes me feel good. We're getting it real close. So we're sitting on 87 acres, and uh, we just ran out, um, which is good. It's exactly where we wanted to be. Well, we wanted to be at 88, but 87 is close enough. So anyway, uh, it's six o'clock. I'm going back to the farm. We're gonna put that in, and I'm going home for tonight. All right, I'm going to leave this parked in here tonight. We will be here for in the morning when we put more seed in it, and it's inside in case it rains. It won't, but in case it does. I wanted to come over here and look at uh, my beans I planted here. I showed you guys these last week. They need some more water. Look at this. So in case you missed the last one, here's what we did. We planted uh, five seeds, Saltro treated beans in here, five seeds in here, Elevo treated, I cannot explain the germination difference or what appears to be a germination difference. Um, but if you look at these cotyledons here, how nice and green those ones are compared to these ones, that is what we were expecting to see. So I'm um, just giving them a little bit more water. Uh, 
and trying to keep them growing. I don't, I don't, I, I expect the rest of these to come up. I haven't done anything different, but for whatever reason, those ones aren't growing as good. Making my walk back to the farm. Plots look good, except for this corner. Ign ignore this. Also, you can see our beans across the road are turning more yellow. Definitely on the home stretch, working towards harvest quickly. Okay, so we did about 87 acres today, which is good. Got it all calibrated, I think, or dialed in pretty darn close. I mean, we did 49 acres on that last box, which is, yeah, that's close enough. Um, so tomorrow's plan is to finish spreading that field. And then we've got another 40 acres up the road. So we've got about 82, 83 acres that needs to be spread. Uh, and then there's another field, but we're going to, we're going to do these, this first 80 here. And then I feel like we need to get it worked in here because there is a chance of rain tomorrow. The last thing that I want to happen is for it to get wet, fat chance, but if that were to happen where it gets wet and then we can't get it worked in and that stuff starts growing. And then if we did tillage, it would kill it and that'd be not ideal. So, uh, I am going to finish spreading that stuff in the morning. Dad is going to get the field cultivator hooked up, the big field cultivator. And then uh, uh, in the afternoon, we'll probably be running that. Um, another thing, I don't know how the week is going to go or what the schedule is going to be exactly. But uh, at some point here, if I'm working an evening in a tractor, I really want to do another live stream. It's been quite a while since I've done one. And I thought this might be a good opportunity if I'm doing some tillage one night or spreading clover seed or something like that. So keep an eye out for that. I'll try and post it and let you know ahead of time. I don't know when. It could happen tomorrow evening. Tomorrow would be Tuesday, uh, maybe Wednesday. I don't really know. I'm just throwing it out there that it may happen. So don't be surprised. Um, anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight, though. I am heading home. So have a great night, everybody. And uh, hit that like and subscribe buttons for me, please. If you got any questions and comments, leave them down below, and I'll be sure to answer them. Thanks for watching.